Hey, what's up, guys? Zane here from Aeon Arts, and I'm back again with another Tuesday Tips episode. Um, pretty much today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use trim paths. Um, pretty much what trim paths are is it's a tool in After Effects that allows you to trace objects that you've drawn, or like if you added a circle or a square, you can trace it out and reveal it instead of having to mask it out manually, which is what a lot of people end up doing. And um, it just it's a really simple and easy tool to use that saves a lot of time and it's um it, I mean, it look it looks really nice and it's kind of trendy currently in the motion graphics world so it's a nice tool to learn so yeah let's hop right into it so I'm gonna make a new composition and um if you're not familiar with After Effects or you're still trying to learn just go up here composition new composition or you can press Control N on your keyboard whichever is more comfortable for you. Um, I'm gonna leave all this stuff default because it doesn't really matter for this project. Um, I'm gonna leave background black just so you guys can see exactly what's going on with the trim paths and how it's all working out. And for this, I'll make a circle. Change that back to white. And yeah, let's make this about, about that size, should be good. Okay, and once you have your little circle or whatever shape that you made, all you have to do is just click your layer, and then you should see this little option. Well, like if your layer is closed, then click a little twirl down, and you'll see this option. It says add. You click this little circle arrow thingy, and then you'll have this option called trim paths. Click that. And then you'll have this new little menu that pops up up under your layer. And it'll have start, end, offset, and trim multiple shapes. The only things you have to worry about for this is start and end. Um, I don't really play around with the offset or the trim multiple shapes. So, I mean, it's not really necessary. At least, I mean, if you want to experiment with it, go right ahead. But uh, I'm just going to be working with the start and the end points. Um, and pretty much what the start and the end does, like, you can, if you move it from 0 to 100 you'll see that the shape itself is disappearing or like it's unrevealing itself and that's I mean it's exactly what trim pads do like it allows you to reveal a shape without having to mask it out like you have like full control over it and um, it's like and once you like figure out like which direction you want the shape to go like do you want it to go left or do you want it to go right and you're going to want to keyframe that part. So for this, I want it to go right or in this direction, you see. So I'll make sure it's at 100% so that you don't see your shape at all. And you're going to make a keyframe. So click the little stopwatch button next to start. And then you're going to want to go forward about 14 or 15 seconds. Or not seconds, frames. <laughs> don't go 15 seconds, that'll be terrible. So yeah, 14 or 15 frames. And then you're going to want to bring this back down to zero. And then when you play it back, you'll see that it traces itself. And you're like, oh, okay, that looks cool. But you want to bring it like a step further. Like you want it to uh, like trace itself, but then like disappear as it's tracing itself, which is something I do in a lot of my projects. If you've seen those um, or like the intro for Tuesday tips, there's also some trim pads in there. Um, so yeah, and pretty much how you would make it disappear as it's revealing itself is you're gonna work, work with the end point. So you're gonna wanna stagger these keyframes. So then you're gonna wanna make it end, make sure it's still at 100%, and make sure you go forward about uh, four or five frames just for starting out. And then you're gonna wanna go to the end start, or the end start keyframe and then go past it about the same amount of frames and then bring that down to zero. And then what that'll do is it'll trace itself out, but it won't stay there. It'll just disappear as it's tracing itself. And that's really good for showing like motion or tracing things out and like having an accent mark appear after it. So yeah, once you have that, you're gonna, I mean, you, if you like how this looks, then I mean, you're good. but. A lot of times you're going to want to easy ease these and pretty much what that is it allows you to 
uh, smooth out these keyframes so that they're not so like static and you see how it's just like one single motion instead of something that's smooth and I don't know, easy on the eyes to look at. So pretty much what you do then is you're going to want to highlight all your keyframes then you're going to want to right click keyframe assistant and then easy ease or you can just simply you know um, what you call it highlight them all and then press F9 on your keyboard but it's the same concept and then your keyframe should change and you should see that they look like this hourglass shape that's a good thing <laughs> and then make sure they're all still highlighted and then you're going to want to click this graph editor button like which is like right up here click that and then and pretty much like what these do are they allow you to customize your keyframes a little bit more so that you can easily like make them smoother or faster or slower whichever way that you know you want it to look but I'm not gonna go too in-depth on how to get the perfect keyframes or how to make your stuff look amazing because that's not the point of this tutorial but yeah I'm just gonna simply highlight these last two and then bring these forward a little bit so that your shape looks more like this and then I'll bring the first two keyframes forward a little bit more and if you play back you see that it starts out fast and then slows down and uh, it just makes things look a little bit smoother and snappier and let's say that you want it to be a little bit slower so you can bring back these two keyframes and you know like it's nice and smooth and easy to look at when it's like that and yeah I mean it's trim pads in a nutshell like I use it for a lot of projects um, it's, it's, a, it's extremely easy to use and it's really helpful especially when you don't want to mask out shapes that you've drawn out and keep in mind like I said this only works for like shapes that you've like from shapes options right here or if you drew out a shape yourself like say you had a shape like this that you drew out that you wanted to use um, it, it only works on things like this so say like you have your keyframes and you like how these keyframes worked on this circle so you can just select your trim path option that you created right here press control C and then press control V on the shape that you just created and then you'll see like it'll copy and paste the same trim path parameters that you made on your circle and that works for any shape that you've made or created or whatever or traced out and um, yeah like you can do all kinds of fun and cool things with trim pads like you can like make multiples of the same circle and then have it like be different colors and um, you can have them go in different directions and you know it just it looks really smooth and really cool to have in your motion graphic projects and um, you know eventually once you get really used to them you can make things kind of like this which is a project I worked on not too long ago um, everything I did like for the beginning part was all trim pads so yeah, it's like you have a lot of options with trim pads and I hope you guys can utilize it in your future projects. So yeah, this has been another episode of Tuesday Tips. Um, if you guys have any other suggestions or tutorials that you want us to do or to cover, um, feel free to let us know in the comments below. Or if you enjoyed this, give it a like. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll catch you guys later. Peace.